I just <coughs> we're recording and I'm going to make you co host. Mm -hmm. I'll go ahead and move forward while we're waiting on that. Um, just the regular norms, make sure you're muted if you're not talking or participating in today's session. Um, you may want to have a no catcher present, though we will have a couple of um, different templates for you to work with, as well as um, making sure if you have any questions, you drop it in the chat box. I may not answer it right then and there, but I definitely will get to you. And then of course, engage at your own comfort level. The more interactive, the better. It will be useful to you to have two windows today. So one where you can see my presentation and one where you can see the platform. Um, if we need to navigate there, the easiest way to do this would be to click file at the very top of, if you're opening Chrome, file um, new window, and that will open it for you. Um, so if you wanna take a second to do that, Go ahead, you just wanna have two separate tabs. The other option would be to click this plus sign here. And once you click the plus sign, you can click on the tab and hold it and pull it away. And that will also create a separate window for you. So either file, open new window, or simply click the plus sign, hold it down and pull it away. Either way, that will give you a new window. Our objectives for today's session are for you to be able to, and let me record as well, okay. uh, for you to be able to apply a three-step method for utilizing the Amplify Science at Home resources, the teacher's guide, lesson brief, and the third-party applications in order to prepare effectively <coughs> to and hybrid instruction. <coughs> We also want you to be able to develop a remote and hybrid instructional best practices toolkit. So let's look at our plan for the day. We're going to start off by framing the day with welcome and introduction. So if you guys just want to go ahead um, and think about, <clears throat> excuse me, and drop your name and school in the chat, feel free to do that. We're then move into at home uh, introductions, the units as well as the videos. From there, we'll discuss preparing to teach remotely using a three-step method and a planning tool. We'll move into general best practices and then of course close out today's session. So let's begin with an anticipatory activity. And I am going to, in the process of you guys, going ahead and um, putting your information in the chat. I am also going to drop a Jamboard in the chat that you can use in order to answer this question here within the anticipatory activity. And then I will share out both. All right, so once you click on that Jamboard, you should be able to access it. So I want you guys, as you go into the Jamboard, to think about one useful resource you've utilized to facilitate your remote instruction during this time. So remote or hybrid instruction during this time. What is one useful resource you have utilized? Go ahead and click on the Jamboard and let's start filling it up. I'll drop it in there one more time. All right, and you can just, you can create a text box if you like, you can do it on a post-it, whatever suits you. But let's go ahead and take a moment to do that and then just put it in on a Jamboard and then I'll fill, I'll share that out once you guys are done. Oh, I'm seeing a lot of Flipgrid, awesome, I love Flipgrid. It's like about maybe 30 more seconds. All right, if you have not had a chance to jump in the Jamboard, feel free to also drop your response in the chat. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and share out what I see in the Jamboard so far. So I have two people saying they have used Flipgrid um, as a tool for their remote and hybrid learning. 
and one has been for student responses. So I think that's really cool. Uh, students get to record themselves and see um, themselves talking on camera. That's pretty cool. Anyone else like to share? Feel free again to drop it in the chat or I'll give like 10 more seconds if you haven't had a chance to put it in Jamboard yet. But that is a really, really good interactive tool for students to use. Okay, so I'm not seeing anything else coming in. So thank you guys that shared that. I'm gonna go ahead and move forward. So let's take a moment now and please drop this in the chat. Rate your comfortability navigating the at-home resources. One, being extremely uncomfortable. What are those? All the way down the continuum to five being, I got this, I'm a pro. So go ahead and drop that in the chat for me right now and I can just see where you guys are placing before today's session. So Heather has already input her response. Thank you, Heather. Anna, thank you. <laughs> I love the half. <laughs> okay, Marguerite, awesome. M. Cooper, thank you very much. Waiting for a couple more folks. Elizabeth, thank you, okay. So I always say in my sessions, keep in mind wherever you are currently, just know that you're going to grow at least one uh, number by the end of this session. So if you guys are already starting off at a three or you're starting off at a two or wherever you are, just know you are definitely going to grow uh, by the end of this session. So thank you so much for being transparent and sharing that with me. So let's take a moment and see if folks have questions. Drop it in the chat if you have any questions at this point. If not, I'll go ahead and push forward. And if you do it anytime, you can always drop it in the chat. Feel free to do so. We'll now move on to the point of the day where we're actually discussing the at-home unit resources and videos. So let's go ahead and do that. So we start off, of course, thinking about, you know, why this is all necessary, the transition from traditional teaching to a different role where it's now remote and hybrid. So Amplify came up with this to make it more feasible for you to be able to still do the Amplify lessons with fidelity while in this new setting. So the Amplify Science at Home resources are a suite of new resources designed to make extended remote and hybrid learning easier for both teachers and students. So that is what it is set up to do. So as you're going through and you're thinking about these resources and where you can get them, you're going to be able to access the Amplify Science at Home resources from the Amplify Science platform, okay? And so you're going to go into your authentic Amplify Science login. Even if you're using a demo, you can still um, go within, but you're going to go to the login. You see here where it has the three lines in the upper left-hand corner, which we sometimes call the hamburger drop-down menu. You're going to click on that. And once you do, you're going to scroll all the way to the bottom until you see the program hub uh, button here. And once you click that, you will be taken to the program hub where you have all of the different resources. So um, PL resources, you have um, lesson plans, videos, and we'll get into that a little bit more later. But all of your resources are available via the program hub. So what are some of the things that you can see when you go to the program hub? Well, there's two different options for how to use the at-home resources. The first option is at-home units. And basically this is a packet or slide version of the Amplify Science units, which has been condensed by 50%. So when we think about teaching remotely, we know that realistically you cannot give the same content and the same amount of content to students as you normally would in the traditional classroom. And so these units have been condensed by 50%. Um, and all of the most pertinent and crucial information has been taken out and put into these new units so that that is what your students are getting when you're teaching them using that resource. And then when you think of the at-home videos, it is simply a compilation of the playlist of the Amplify Science lessons. So this is taught by real Amplify Science teachers. So you can choose to use the videos in two ways. You can either say, awesome, this saves me so much time, I'm just gonna play this video for my students, or you can say, you know what, I would really prefer for my students to see me. So I'm going to take this video, I'm going to look at it, and then I'm going to recreate it with me teaching. There is no right or wrong way, whatever you prefer and whatever you feel works best for you and your students is what you should do. Okay, um, so what I want to do now is take a moment and navigate to the 
at home resources so you guys can take a look at the resources for first grade. So I'm going to walk you through how I would do that. So I'm going to go to learning.amplify.com. Once I'm there, I'm going to log in with Amplify, put in my authentic credentials. And once I've done that, I'm here, first grade, perfect. However, I want to go to the at home resources uh, via the program hub, so I'm gonna click on the hamburger drop down here, right? I'm gonna scroll all the way to the bottom until I see program hub. And once I see that, I'm just gonna click on the program hub. Okay, so now I am at the program hub. I'm going to click on, I am a teacher. And then it takes me to all of the resources that are available to me. So once I, am at, once I click on the I am a teacher button, I am going to select this first link here because these are where all of the at home science resources are housed. So let me click on that button or that link rather. Okay, and once I've done that, now I am here with all of my different resources that are available to me. So I'm gonna scroll down and you see here, these are grade level resources, okay? So in a moment, I'm gonna click on it, but I'm gonna keep going to show you the at-home video. So this is simply an introduction to how to um, use these to Amplify Science at Home, the at-home units. As you continue to scroll, okay? You see here how to videos webinars, caregiver support, okay? So if you wanna have that homeschool connection, all of those resources are there. So now I'm gonna go back up and I'm going to click on grade one. And once I click on grade one, now I have all of the resources that are available for my grade level. Okay, so you see your three units for first grade. As you scroll down, you see how students are able to gain access to um, the books digitally using that username and password available both in English and Spanish the at-home unit resources, so the teacher overview, that's gonna be where you find, it's basically like a teacher's guide, uh, the family overview, the slides, the packet compilation, the student sheets, all right, instructions, and then lesson by lesson, the digital options versus the print-based options for kids who do not have access to technology. And as you continue scrolling down, the videos. Okay. So I want you guys to take a moment now and look through the resources at the, um, via the program hub, some of the at-home resources, and tell me one thing that you found that you really liked and are excited to get started with. All right, so we'll take about two minutes to do that. If anyone needs help navigating there, drop it in the chat and I will assist. So we'll come back together at 421. One minute remaining.
All righty, let's come back together. So if you have not already, I see a couple of people shared already. Um, can you go ahead and drop in the chat? What is something that you're excited to begin with? I see Heather shared, I love the YouTube videos. Those are really, really helpful. Is there anyone else that saw anything that you're super, super excited about getting to um, start with the at-home resources? Okay, cool. Let's go ahead and move forward. Thank you for sharing that, Heather. So we're gonna take a brief look at each type of resource following this structure. We'll start with the overview, then a brief exploration time, and then share insights and ask questions, okay? So what are the at-home units? They are strategically modified versions of Amplify Science units highlighting key activities from the program, all right? So again, as I mentioned, there are two different types. So when we think about having reduced time for teaching science, there's two options. The first being the at-home packets, which is print-based, and those are gonna be for your students that don't have access to technology. And then of course the other option are the slides and the student sheets, which is technology-based. For, so for your kids that do have access to technology, you may want to use the at-home slides and student sheets. If you know your kids don't have access, of course you want to use the home-based packets. But the great thing about these two resources is even if you're using a home-based package, your students are still getting all of the information they would get if they had access to technology. So if you're worried about that, don't. They are not missing out on anything, okay? So within the presentations with, for the slides as well as for the packets, there are embedded links to videos, uh, hands-on demonstrations, digital tools, and read aloud. So the cool thing about the videos, they are via tiny URL. So for like your students that don't have access to technology, if they have a smartphone, they can watch it from the smartphone. So that's the really cool thing about it is that they can just, they, all they need is a phone. They don't even need a um, computer or a laptop or anything like that. All right. Um, so alternatively to the embedded links, students can access the curriculum via the digital tools. So for grades two through eight, of course, um, as well as digital books for K through five. Okay, and this you may want to take a picture or a screenshot of. This is the site your students will go to in order to access the books. And this is the username and password they would use. So I'll leave that up there for a second. I'm also going to drop it in the chat if anyone would like to um, copy and paste it because that's going to be super, super important as you're going through and supporting your students. I know that's a question we always get. How do my kids get access to the books, especially during this pertinent time? We got you covered. So I'm going to go ahead and drop that in the chat as well. All righty, so let's go ahead and move forward. So this is an example of what the lessons look like. So as you can see, it shows you very clearly where the lesson was adapted from. Uh, the key activities that are pulled out, so the reading portion for the, uh, this at-home lesson five, the do portion, the draw and write, and the talk were the four key activities that were pulled out from this um, lesson. And there's also ideas for synchronous or in-person instruction, should that be something that is relevant to your school. So as you can see here, it's very clearly lined out for you, even though it has been adapted from the original lesson, it has a lot of the same key components that you're already used to. All right, so just outlining the activities that were shown there. And then the most awesome part, all resources are fully editable and customizable, okay? So when you think about the family overview, which is gonna provide context for your fa the families that, of your students, the teacher overview, the student materials, okay? All of these things are fully editable and customizable so you can um, add in information if you feel like you need to or maybe tweak information specifically for uh, some of your students, you can 100% do that. 
Now I want to take a moment and let you guys explore your at home unit. So you're going to navigate to the animal and plant defenses um, unit on the program hub like we did a couple of moments ago. And you are going to choose whether you want to start with the teacher overview or look more closely at a lesson. Okay. So take a moment to do that. And once you've done that, we'll come back and share some of your insights, something you think and something you wonder. So let's take about five minutes to explore and then come back together. Keeping in mind, these are the things that we're going to have to share out when we come back, okay? So it is now 426. We'll come back together at 431. Two minutes remaining. If you're done exploring, feel free to go ahead and drop your think or in wonder into the chat.
Okay, let's go ahead and come back together now. And let's see, what are some of your insights and wonderings taking a closer look at the at-home resources? Let's see. Okay, Marguerite shares, I wonder how the pre-unit assessment conversation will go. Awesome, I think that's a really valid wondering, right? If every class is different, so that's a really good insightful wondering. What are other folks thinking about as you're looking at these resources? Thank you for sharing, Marguerite. Okay, I know I'm wondering because every school is different, every teacher, every classroom is different, how people will use them in accordance to how you're used to teaching and your teaching style. Um, even the same resources can look very different from classroom to classroom. So that's something that I'd be interested to hear about how folks are going about using these resources. All right, so let's go ahead and move forward. So now we come to the at-home video. So these are versions of original Amplify Science lessons which have been um, adapted for remote learning and again are taught by real Amplify Science teachers. As I mentioned earlier, you can choose to use the video as is or you can say I'm going to use this as a model and record my own video for my students. All right. So when you're thinking about the at-home videos, it is um, a lesson of playlists that include all the activities from the original units. And if you are thinking about the same amount of instructional time as you normally would have applies to you, this is going to be a really good resource. It does require tech access, so that's the um, something to think about in terms of your students, who has tech access, who does not. And as I mentioned earlier, you can use them as a model for making your own, or you can use them as is. Okay. It does create a very interactive video experience because within the videos, there are calls to action. So there are think prompts. There's parts where the students have to pause to take notes. They get to stand up and try it. They can talk to someone about it. Um, also, there are standalone videos within the playlist. So read alouds, digital tool uses, hands-on opportunities. And you can choose to just have the students watch the videos or you can use them in collaboration with the notebooks or other materials you feel may be relevant. So, um, it is definitely a very interactive experience, which makes it perfect for remote learning and different from just typically watching a video and not getting to think about and actually interact with that video. So your students do have the chance to do that. And this is the structure of how it's set up. So it pairs perfectly with every activity within the lesson. So as you can see here for activity one, there are two videos. For activity two, there are two videos. For activity three, there are three videos and for activity four, there's one, okay? So it may vary just because it's one activity doesn't mean it's one video. We wanted to make the videos pretty short and concise. Um, so we did put certain time frames on them. So like for, as you can see here for activity one, there's actually two different videos. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and jump on the platform just to show you guys one more time where you would go to find these videos. So if we're starting at the very beginning, because I like to make sure to walk through properly, right? So once we're at the program hub, you click on I am a teacher. You're going to go ahead and click on remote learning, which is the first link there. And then I'm going to scroll down until I see grade level resources and I'm going to select my grade level. So we're grade one. And once I'm here at my grade levels resources, I'm going to keep scrolling until I see my videos. So scroll. Okay, this is the um, at home video playlist here. Okay, and it's broken down by each of the different chapters in English and Spanish. So just to show you where to go in order to access those videos that are going to be super helpful as you're going through and thinking about supporting your students, whether it's a remote or hybrid model. All right, so let's take a moment now and give you guys a chance to explore your at home videos. Um, so you're going to actually navigate animal and plant um, defenses. And I just want you to look at the video that's there. Oops, sorry, I want you guys to look at the video that's there. And you may want to look at the lesson and then compare the two. So what do you find in the video? What do you find in the lesson? 
So again, we're going to take about another five minutes to do this. So it's 436. We'll come back together at 441. Um, and so yeah, you're comparing your video and you're comparing the lesson to see similarities and differences. Okay, so we're taking five minutes for this. If you have any questions, feel free to drop it in the chat. Let's take about one more minute. All right, so let's go ahead and come back together. Having to a moment to take a look at the video versus the lesson, <clears throat> what are some things that you think or wonder? Take a moment and drop it in the chat for me. What are some of your thoughts? What are some things you wonder? Okay, so I see Anna is sharing. I think these are great if a child misses the live lesson. Yep, I agree with you 100%. They can go back and have a chance to watch it at their own pace and reflect. Thank you for sharing that, Anna. Any other thoughts? What else are folks thinking? Okay, Heather shares. I think students will get the exact same content from the videos as the lessons. I wonder if they will actually pause and think. I hope so. And I think if we make that the norm, right, if we 
we kind of set that precedent for them and say, hey guys, in the video is going to tell you to pause. I want you to really pause and think about it the same way you would um, in class and how we have think time in class and really just kind of setting that stage for them. I think we'll make it the norm and then they can actually follow up with it. Elizabeth shares the video is great support. Awesome, so thank you guys so much for taking a moment to reflect on that. Okay, so now we're going to move into the three-step method and I'm going to drop the planning tool in the chat. So I want you guys to navigate to your grade level unit with the at-home resources. You're going to open the teacher overview document that I showed you earlier and I'll show you how to do this. Um, you are going to find a at-home lesson that you're up to or you simply want to navigate. You're going to look at the key activities and the ideas for synchronous or in-person instruction. And then you're gonna skim through the different versions, okay? And then you're going to um, navigate to your home video and view the best practices and the clips that are there for synchronous and asynchronous instruction, okay? So let me go ahead and first drop this into the chat for you, the planning document. All right, and so we will take about, let's take about seven minutes for you to complete this, all right? And of course, if you have any questions along the way, um, feel free to ask. I am going to just show you one more time how to navigate to the places that I asked you to, okay? So if we are in the program hub, we'll start from this point, all right? Then I'm gonna go ahead and click on animal and plant defenses. This is your teacher overview. Okay, so I'm gonna click on my teacher overview. And once I've done that, I can scroll down and I see the at-home units, I see the resources that are available, at-home unit pacing, extending the unit, the student options, the written options. You see these are links here to the the different resources for the students as well. And as you continue scrolling down the wall options, okay. At home guidance for synchronous and in-person learning. That's one of the places I asked you to scroll to. And as you continue to scroll, you see the lessons within this unit, okay. Keep scrolling down, you have the teacher outline. All right, so I want you guys to take, um, take about six minutes to look at this. I went ahead and dropped the planning tool into the chat. So take a moment now and check and see if you're able to access it. Hopefully you are, make a copy of it so you all are not um, writing, let's see. Make a copy of it so you all can edit it for your, yourself and then go ahead and you can feel free to fill it in. All right, and I'm gonna put this back up here so you can see.
Take about one more minute. All right, so let's come back together. So what were some of the different strategies you guys, excuse me, would um, advise for people as you're going through and you're looking at the at-home units and you're thinking about how to teach this remotely? Go ahead and drop it in the chat for me. What were some of the different strategies you think uh, people could use? Okay, Marguerite shares using pictures to navigate the site. Awesome, I think that's fantastic. Sometimes our students need more support, right? So we're expecting them to do certain things. We have to give them a little bit more guidance in the beginning in order to help them. <clears throat> Other thoughts? Okay, even though you're remote, just setting up systems and structures in place to make sure that your students are still following a pattern and still uh, following some type of organization in order to make it automatic to them and to make it easier on you as well. That's something that I can think of um, right off the top of my head. And if you guys think of anything else as we continue to move along, just let me know. Drop it in the chat. Oh, Margaret share again. Having students use Flipgrid to tell you what they've learned specifically for L's or those that don't have a grasp on the language. I think that's a fantastic idea. Also using three uh, third party tools, right? So fun stuff like Jamboard, Google Classroom, or Pear Deck. You can absolutely use these apps in order to edit um, original classroom slides from Amplify Science or the at-home slides in order to um, give the work to your students as well. So this is an example of what a Pear Deck slide could look like. So again, it's Amplify content, but the format is different. Okay, and for K-5, um, having that digital component is nice. So that's a consideration that you may want to think about. And then as you're going through, even you're preparing to teach, right? So the three-step method, go to the program hub, decide which at-home resources you're going to use, <clears throat> look at the lesson brief, and then decide which application you're going to use, and then pair your resources with that application in order to give it to your students. So you may want to keep this three-step process in mind. Okay, so let's take a moment now and do another temperature check. So I know you guys came in on a certain level um, and hopefully from going back and forth and kind of navigating between the at-home uh, site where the resources are, rate yourself. What are, where are you in terms of um, your comfortability with the three-step method in remote teaching? So what we just talked about here going to the site, being able to access the lesson, and then taking that, those resources and applying it to third-party applications. So I see Heather has rated herself already. Thank you so much, Heather. Waiting for a couple of other folks. Elizabeth, awesome. Okay, M. Cooper. Fantastic. So thank you guys so much for sharing that. All right, so now let's talk about the um, best practices uh, that you guys had a chance to jot into the tool co-construction kit. 
So this is what I dropped in the chat for you guys. Um, when you're thinking about best practices, this is something that would be really, really good for you to use even as you're planning remotely. If you guys are still having remote PLCs, this is something that's going to be super valuable to you and your teammates, guys. You can absolutely just drop this and say, hey, whatever's been working for you, drop it in there. Like, let me know what you're doing. I'll let you know what I'm doing. And this is a really easy and cool way for you guys to share best practices and try out what someone else is doing to see if maybe it'll work for you in your classroom. Another thing that I want to go ahead now and take a moment and drop in the chat is a planning tool that you can use as you're going through and starting your planning um, for your at home resources. And this planning tool is really helpful because it outlines everything for you. And so it shows you basically step by step. I'm going to go ahead and put it up here as well so you guys can see it. Okay. And so as you can see here, it shows you the chapter questions, um, the group that you're working with the at-home lesson, the dates, the investigation questions, the key activities that I showed you guys earlier, the dates you're going to administer it. So all of this information is here for you to really just take your time and go through step-by-step -step and plan out your lessons very thoroughly. So there's a respondents for synchronous ideas, at-home videos, um, original lessons, differentiation, which is a really big one as well. So as you guys know, you can use some of the different strategies I know you guys have been using already, or you can simply go into the Amplify Science platform and use those differentiation strategies that are there. There's a, a lot of different ways you can support your students, but this is a very valuable tool, as is the um, planning template that I just dropped into the chat for you guys to use and share information and just organize yourself as a whole. All right. So now um, we've come to the portion of the day where we're closing and reflecting. Okay, so as we're thinking about our objectives for today, applying the three-step method, so the one we reviewed earlier, um, as well as continuing to develop remote and hybrid instructional best practices that you guys had a chance to share um, a little bit earlier. So rate yourself. One, I'm not sure how I'm doing at this, Three, I have some good ideas, but still have some questions. Or five, I have a solid plan for how to make this work. So just rate yourself. You guys can go ahead and drop that in the chat. Awesome, yep. I have some ideas, but still have some questions, cool. So again, like I said, if you guys have any questions, we're about to transition in a moment into the question and answer session. So that is absolutely perfect. All right, and don't forget about the New York City resource site. I'm going to go ahead and drop that into the chat, but so many times we forget about the New York City resource site, and that is a really valuable tool that has a lot of useful information there for you. And basically any questions you have, you can go to the New York City resource site and it will answer it. Um, I know a lot of times people have questions around login or people have questions around when's the next PL. All of those things can be answered on the New York City resource site. So I'm gonna go ahead and drop that in the chat. And please feel free to bookmark it. You will want to check that site often as it gives you the most up-to-date and current Amplify information. All right, just a um, picture of some of the things that you guys can access on the New York City Resource site. All right, and just again, another reminder of where to go in order to access the program hub information you're going to actually log into your amplify science platform and once you've done that in the upper left hand corner you're going to click on these three lines here and then scroll all the way to the bottom until you see program hub and click on the program hub okay so you'll want to make sure you keep that in mind when you're trying to access your at home resources okay and should you need help you definitely want to go to the program guide or amplify help it has a lot of useful information there, um, questions related to other uh, program structure, flexibility, philosophies. Um, that's what you're going to find at the program guide. On the Amplify Help, you'll find advice and answers from the Amplify team. Uh, a lot of teachers ask questions and also give suggestions on there, so you may want to check that out. And then this, of course, is the caregiver site that you can provide uh, for your families. 
So you may want to keep that in mind, take a picture of that or jot that down so that you can give that to the families and they can go and check out the caregiver site to make sure you're having a good home school connection. And should you need support, you can call, you can email, you can chat in the platform um, for the Amplify support. <clears throat> just give very specific information because that's how they're able to help you the fastest. So just a snapshot of some of the information they may request you to have so that they're able to solve your problem really, really quickly. Okay, final questions. We'll actually hold that because we're about to move into that section anyway. So if you guys would not mind taking a moment to fill out the survey, uh, my information is there. I'm gonna go ahead and drop the link in the chat to hopefully make it easier when accessing the survey. And then my name is there as well. So if you could go ahead and um, fill that out for me, I'd really, really appreciate it. And then we're going to transition into the part of the day where you guys get to ask your questions and have them answered. So once you have um, finished taking the survey, if you could just go ahead and drop a done in the chat for me, that'd be fantastic. Then I know you're ready to move on to the next portion of our day. And thank you guys so much. You've been awesome with your participation and your sharing out. Okay, so as you guys are completing the survey, I just want to take the opportunity for, for, to thank you all for joining us today. Um, I dropped a link in the chat <clears throat> where you can actually find the agenda, PowerPoint, and planning tool for your reference if you're interested. Um, and I also want to take a minute to thank ISIS for an amazing presentation today. Um, you will find a recorded um, session in the New York City Amplify website for your colleagues who could not attend today and on future professional learning opportunities. Um, in addition to all the um, sessions that are, all the Amplify sessions are being recorded and be, are available on the Amplify website. So thank you so much. So we're gonna um, move in in about a minute. We're gonna move into question and answer. So um, we are here to answer any of your questions. Um, it doesn't have to be related to the content today, but it could be about anything um, Amplify. So uh, we will be more than happy to address any of your questions. Thank you. Thank you for joining, Heather. We're going to now move into question and answer. So if anybody has any questions for ISIS or for um, Nancy and I, we are here from the STEM department to address any of your questions. We'll be more than happy to um, you know, answer.
Isis, you might want to turn off the recording. Or Nancy, if you're still on. Sure, I'll do it. Thank you.